that's the chase intrigue in Iraq. The, forgive me. Here at home, there was fresh and huge interest about Iraq politically. Thanks to an unauthorized leak on Tuesday, we are expecting President Obama to announce tomorrow his plans to draw down U.S. forces in Iraq by August of 2010, drawing down to a residual force of up to 50,000 troops. He reportedly met with congressional leaders tonight to tell them about the timeline and the troop levels. Now, 50,000 sounds like a lot of residual forces to some people. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told me last night that 15 or 20,000 seemed like a reasonable number to her. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid and Senator Chuck Schumer also said today they expected to hear that the residual force would be smaller. So one big question now is this. Does 50,000 troops still there equal end of the war? Joining us now is Paul Rykoff, founder and executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Paul, thank you for coming on the show. Nice to see you. My pleasure, Rachel. Good to be with you. How can you tell the difference between a combat troop and a residual force troop? That's a great question. I think lately politicians have been throwing these terms around pretty loosely, actually throughout the war. Hmm. You hear them talk about combat troops, non-combat troops. When I was in the Army, combat arms troops referred to infantry, armor, artillery, special forces. Everything beyond that was considered combat support, combat service support. But I think throughout the wars, you've seen politicians throw these terms around. You've also seen them throw numbers around. Mm -hmm. I was a bit bothered. Last night you saw Speaker Pelosi say 50,000, no, uh, 15, maybe 20. They throw numbers around, 15, 20, 30, 35, with no real rationale. We've got to understand that troops are part of a solution. They've got to be complemented by economic investment, by State Department assets, by diplomacy. We've fallen back into a four-year-old argument about troop numbers. Right. Well, the thing that I thought was interesting about the way that Pelosi described that numerical issue, I said, doesn't 50,000 seem like a lot? She said, well, I want to know what they're for. Right. And to a certain extent, it's, it's almost like learning the details for us as citizens and as politicians is a good thing. On the other hand, learning the details is sometimes not a good thing because there is some value, I think, to taking a big picture perspective on this and saying, if we've got 50,000 people there, we haven't left. On the other hand, knowing what those troops are doing there, what their mission is, how much at risk they are, right. whether or not that means that we can ever scale down our, our presence there by a lot, um, it's, it seems important, too. Sometimes I don't know the responsible way to approach these big questions. Well, they're still driving toward uh, abiding by the sofa and getting all the troops out by 2012. Yeah. And they're moving toward throwing this entire vehicle in reverse, which is really what the American people want. It seems like what the Iraqi people want and what Obama said he was going to do all along. He said he was going to leave behind a residual force. The timeline is adjusted. But the thing I'm a bit concerned about is nobody's talking about how we're going to care for these troops when they come home. Hmm. How are we going to deal with the educational benefits that they need, getting the GI Bill up to speed for August? How how do we deal with this, this economic situation? They're coming home to the hardest economy in decades, and they shouldn't be coming home to an unemployment check. We've got to get ahead of that curve and understand there's a surge of troops coming home to, to America right. in 2009 and 2010. I hope to hear more about that tomorrow, too. The overall strain on military families, the overall strain on members of the military and on our military readiness, though, is in part driven by how long we've got people in theater and how many tours people are doing. Yeah. I mean, when during the campaign, Obama described the residual force mission as as protecting American assets, conducting limited counterterrorism efforts, and training Iraqi security forces. That's what the residual force will do. How different is that from what it was like to be fighting the war there? Isn't that something? Yeah, like it some wasn't of the same much stuff? different from what I did when yeah. I was there. And I think the bottom line is, if you're a soldier or marine on the ground, you're still in harm's way. If you're getting shot at and you've got a weapon in your hand, you feel like you're a combat force at the time. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really kind of you know concerned about the murkiness and, and the lack of clarity around the entire debate. And I think you're starting to see that shift over to Afghanistan now as well. Mm. We're talking about just add 30,000 troops. Well, adding troops has got to be part of a recipe for for uh, for attacking a counterinsurgency. It's not an antidote. It's got to be complicated with all these other things we've got to talk about the border issues we've got to talk about the surrounding countries we've got to talk about our long-term plan and I'm very concerned you've been good about pushing forward the debate on Afghanistan and getting people to have a real discussion and understand it's not just Iraq part two Paul one last question for you uh, the Defense Department is repealing the, the, the ban on media coverage of flag draped coffins coming home from theater Are you in favor of that I am. I think th there's an important issue here. They're leaving it up to the families. Yeah. They're not just saying open it up to the media. They're saying leave it up to the families and we will abide by the family's wishes. This is exactly what they do at Arlington. Mm -hmm. And it's worked at Arlington. It's been in, in accordance with the family's desire. And I think it's an important way to connect the human uh, cost of the war with the American people who so far have been really detached in an unprecedented way.
Paul Rykoff, ex Executive Director and Founder of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Always great to have you on the show. Thank Good you, to see Rachel. you, Paul. Thank you, Rachel. Hey, if you are a returning veteran from Iraq or Afghanistan, number one, welcome home. Number two, check out IAVA's website, communityofveterans.org. It is vets only. Lots of very useful stuff there.